And oh my gosh, Matt, get the net. Dude, I'm serious, this might be my PB. Paper mouth. Welcome on back to the channel, everybody. Man, full sunscreen on the feet right now. Yeah, well, it's much needed. Yesterday was a little bit of a situation. You have got scuzzorched. That's yeah. nuclear. It's bad. So here's the situation we got going on here, folks. First of all, GuggenSquad.com, 4th of July, threads going on, including our new Squad Tech limited edition hoodie. Get you some. Make sure to get you a nice cap on your face. Represent that red, white, and blue out there on the water this year. Just don't get too red. Link down in the description, folks. Okay, so here we are at Lake Fork. Me and Matt were just over at a lake not too far from here, um, Cedar Creek Lake, and found a little bit of crappie action. Uh, seemed kind of good, and then you were just here with our buddy Lunkers TV yep. uh, just a bit ago. And you guys called me and you're like, Rack, there's, just, there's crappie everywhere. There's crappie. And I'm like, how many you caught? You're like, none. We're bass fishing. I'm like, what do you do? Oh my gosh, already first little pile we come across. We're not even out of the marina yet. It's June in early summer when all the crappie and bass too, when they start to move offshore, especially in a lake that has trees like this, it can be some of the most incredible fishing that you do. Uh, just by sitting in one spot. That's what we're gonna try to do here. I've got some old waypoints. We'll search out some new stuff. But I have got a green cooler here behind me. Uh, the goal is to fill that thing up with some delicious pork chops of the lake. So that's what we're gonna go to do. All right, I gotta remember how to run out here first. Because the last time I was here, you guys know, I uh, bit my crop shaft and the silver bullet was out of commission. So let's take our time, be careful. Um, yeah, we're about to catch them. About all there is to that. Fish on? Fish Are you on. the first one to catch one? Oh, that's a keeper. Nice, beautiful. Would you just look at him? Dude, look at that freaking guy. Oh, dude. He's got the black stripe down his back. Is that like that's extra bonus points? That's can you bonus get those? points, man. You know how tasty that thing's gonna be? Well, it didn't take long for Matt to uh, pump into the first one here. Barely got my GoPro on. Beautiful color on that guy, too. I think he wanted that one. That's uh that's probably one of the first crappie caught on the Guggen finesse. On the Guggen finesse? Yeah. Uh, finesse light. Felt good. good. Felt felt a good pop on him. Yeah. Let's see. Actually, we'll just go ahead and throw him on ice. Get him get him chilled down here. There's so savages in there. I'm just gonna go ahead and let you know. Yeah. You got bit like three times, right? Yeah. So this is an eighth ounce jig head, y'all. And just got a little, you know, shad looking plastic on there. I've got a 10 pound leader on, I think this is 10 pound braid as well. And um, just making a little pitch out in front. There's a tree down here and we're just doing the swing method. So we're gonna let that crappie jig swing into the fish and you're looking for your line to just twitch, pop. Yeah, you gotta bend it back. Oh, oh, got him. Oh my gosh, literally had him on the line. Right on top of them, unfortunately. You tell me I gotta bend that more. Got him. Literally like two feet down. Oh my gosh, giant. This is a giant. World record? Dude, look at this thing I got, I got going on here. Oh my God. That thing was five feet under the trolling motor. I literally just had a rod's length of line out. Now, buddy if you don't like catching hog jammers like that on a wednesday afternoon you just ain't american the huddle house going what are we gonna do today yes there's a story behind why we're here today you're just above them that one's rising up come get it yep you're yep, about to get us got him no he's not on him. he's looking at it though yeah he definitely was he's still on it he came away from the pile to, to get some Just a 
There he is. There's one. My bad. Who wants it? Who wants it? There we go. Here he comes. There. Got him. Oh, you. Oh, no. Three. Got him. Oh, God. He came off. I'm having a little hookup issue here. Got him. That was such a light bite. Little guy. I'll throw him back. Oh, gosh. That was a beautiful hit to watch right there. Love to see it. You're going home. No! <laughs> I lost him. <laughs> this is the moment I said, you're going home. He was like, nope, no, I'm not. And now I'm going to go tell all of my friends not to buy your lure. I think uh, we have to get on top of them because the last two that I've caught, it's like straight up dangle. Got him. Take her easy. Take her easy on the reel. There we go. Light bite. Oh gosh, I almost lost that one too. I just took it really easy on that fish and look at the hole that's in its mouth right here. So very much different than a winter fish who's gonna have a uh, you know much much stiffer lip, I guess you could say. We are 10 inches. Oh goodness. Tasty little filet. About 12 foot dead stick. Oh gosh. That was not a gentle pull up. I mean, they just want to look at it. Sometimes they just like to look at it. I think you gotta get it a little bit more in their wheelhouse. They're away from the tree. God. You know, I always like to try that little pitch method, the swing method first, but in the summer, things can get pretty still and uh, sometimes you just have to get right on top of them. I think that's what, what we're gonna do here. And we're just gonna give them that dead stick. I don't know why crappie just like it sitting still, but you can really figure this out watching the electronics with LiScope. You see that they they just tend to like to eat it when it's sitting still. So anyway, they're lazy, I guess. We're uh, right, we're still a little out, 15 feet ahead. This is the same kind of deal, it's a bit over tree. They like the dead stick. He's little. Oh, is that what we're, damn. Dude, the one that's still on my jig right now is giant. Nope, not gonna do it today. What do we want? What do we want? I might go with orange since Matt's throwing pink. I like this sickle cell, sickle, sickle cell, my goodness. I like this sickle style hook, especially this time of year, because that, that little notch in there keeps those fish on where a, uh, a regular style hook you'll lose a little bit more. Never thrown this color combo. We're gonna try it. Orange, black, and pink. That is, that's a specimen there. Here we go. Like when I hit spot lock, that, I want spot lock. You know what I mean? This nonsense is, how does this help anybody? It just causes disturbances too. It's just, yeah, it's like, probably a tornado of like, how is he currents not? down there oh dude what bass just came up eight right there from the disturbance off the garmin nope, nope there you go did you get bit yeah saw it there we go. got him oh shoot oh that's a good there we go oh, oh dude yeah dude they're paper mouth right now so uh we just gotta Boat flips are difficult. Boat flips are dangerous. Having a lot of escapees. What in the world is this, dude? <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> We're just on this tree. There's no spot lock. Look at the look at the uh, crappie that have all risen up. Just, did we just shake them up? I think we did. There we go. Oh my gosh. They're busting on it right now, but I'm not connecting. God, there we go. Soft mouth, little buddies. You know, there's a couple of tankers in there though. First little stint, ended up with three. Not the, uh, not the performance I was hoping for. We probably saw, I don't know, 60, 70 crappie. Um, and they were just kind of nipping at it. Okay, let's 
Spotlight. Nope. Nope, we're not using one. Oh, just got tugged. Oh, gosh. Oh, oh we're both hooked up. That's a big and oh my gosh. Matt, get the net. Dude, I'm serious. This might be my PB. Paper mouth. Oh my God, it's a giant. You know where the net is? Yes, hold on. Dude, dude, dude. I'm serious. This is a freaking giant. Okay, okay. Where was the net? Dude, oh my gosh. Where was the net? Dude, just, oh. If you lose this fish. If I lose this fish, where's the... I'm just going to have to tire him out, dude. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got... Where's that net at? Right here, right here. Oh my God, it's a giant. Biggest crappie of my life. Okay. Coming around, one more pass. Ready? Yep. Hold on. Come on. Here we go, here we go, here we go. This is it, this is it. Oh, oh my gosh, dude. Look at that freaking fish. Holy cow, that looks like a bass. <laughs> oh my God. That's freaking massive. Oh my gosh. Let's get this thing on the... Uh, I don't know about weight wise, but length wise, this is next level. My PB is like, I don't even know. I know I've caught some, I think 16 inches is my longest one. I, I tried to anchor us. No way, it's not working. Oh my gosh, no, don't you do that. No, we're gonna measure you down here. <laughs> Look at this thing. Oh, this is an absolute it's hammer. 16 inches. 16. Okay. 16.25, not my, it's pretty daggum close. What is happening with our trolling motor? Oh, no, we man. have no spot lock. Just, yeah, just turn it off. There's no, there's zero point in having this thing on. That has got to be one of my biggest crappie ever. If this was like a March crappie, the weight on that thing, but it's skinny because it's summer. But my goodness, there are some slab stools out there on this thing. Ooh. We're gonna go old fashioned right now. I know we talk about all this bass fishing technology, but technology is failing us right now. I guess it needs to be recalibrated or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ease up on it. Yeah, just, oh my gosh, dude, the amount of fish. Scan on that so that folks at home can see this. What we're about to do to these fish should be a crime. When I turn on the spot lock, which we're all used to now, it's like driving an automatic. It uh, it just goes in circles. Oh, you're on one. He's about to get it. I saw him lift up. There we go. Oh, wow, bam. Oh. oh, dude, that was a big one. You still oh. got him? God. No, I think I was getting caught up in the tree with him. Yeah, I heard I him. I think that's what was going on. Grinding on it. Hmm, not a good sound. Wish I could get on spot lock and just retie, but we all don't know how that would go. This one's definitely pretty snaggy. Oh, it popped on the boat. Got him. It popped on the side of the boat. Oh my gosh. Dude. We're gonna have to start netting him. Oh, I got him. What's happening on my reel? Of course. Don't think he would make it. Wow, that was like the deadest of sticks. If that thing's 10 inches, he's going in the cooler. I don't Just think on, I don't on think he's principle. I don't think he's 10 inches, but. I mean, first fish we've caught in a while. Got one. This one feels good. Yeah. Don't get off. I was gonna get off. Don't do it. There we go. An absolute dead stick. That's what they want. Oh, that's a whopper in there. Thing is, I like barely. I didn't even feel it. I know. I didn't feel that last one either. There we go. Barely biting it. Oh, come here, Chungus. Oh, wow. There you go. Oh, yeah. Making moves. Making crappie moves. 
Oh my gosh, look at the bass, dude. Look at the bass swimming in here. Dude, it's a freaking giant. Look at it. Oh my god. All right, folks, we had to switch gears after catching a few more crappie because uh, this next little crappie spot we're looking at just had some very large looking bass marks. You know, I'm, it's not gonna hurt my feelings to catch an eight plus pound bass out here. Come on now. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. She picked up the jig. Just catch a juicy bass right in the middle of the day. Nice. That is good. That's fun to see right there, folks. Nice little slot fish. I can promise you though, we saw some juicy marks down there that are uh telling of some five plus pounders i didn't even feel that bass bite i just it felt squishy it's right behind us so they're off they're off the point a little bit a little deeper i got him i got him he was in the top of the tree he was right i mean just under the surface oh it's bass got a bunch of bass up in here there may be a few tree snags in the mix here, folks. Bug gets tugs. Oh, oh that's a big bass. What are, what are we in right now? What is going on? I'm telling you, this tree, dude, has huge fish on it. There's no, there's no denying it. A giant bass just came out right behind the boat. Oh, it ate that little bass I just threw back. Oh, I was wondering what happened there. Oh, we've been a little distracted with the largemouth. Got the got the other one. All right, folks, last ditch effort here. Matt just got the biggest bass bite of his last three days of his life he said yep. <laughs> i just caught a crappie but let me fill you in on what else happened so uh i had my rod and i was up here and i was trying to get my gopro to turn on and i had the line hanging over the trolling motor well the trolling motor sucked in my line i thought i had a giant broke my line i got it untangled and uh that was pretty much the end of that story right there. But we do have one last little pod of crappie. They're just not, you know, they're just not activated. Like they're just not eating like they should. The bass and the crappie are, usually it's like whatever's biting, I'm all, I'm all for. I go, I go for whatever's biting the best, but today they both have the lock jaw. Having to really settle down on these crappie get them the bass they just do the same thing they'll bite it but they're not really hanging on to it well for some reason the spinning reel is on the right side does anybody else do that comment down below i would like to know a ratio this has just been one of those days on oh my gosh big and smoked me that is a big in there. Yes. Wow. Get up in this boat. Have they been activated? I might have just activated them. You know, we don't we don't have a lot in the cooler, but what we do have is sort of a show. Show you what we got happening in here. Just some big boys. Oh my, I'm just getting on these hammers right now. Gear. With your gear. Little, uh, little afternoon rally. This is back to the old ways. You gotta, you gotta throw them in the cooler super quick. You gotta 
get back on your spot. She's coming up to it. Oh, did not eat it. Gave her a daggum juicy dangle. Can't ask for any, I tried hard. Caught a giant crappie. My face is sunburned, I'm shiny, I'm oily. Uh, worked up a good sweat out here today. With my buddy. So, that's all you can really ask for. Boat buddies. Folks, we have quite the bounty gathered up over, uh, well, two days. Go to the crankbait. Caught this catfish yesterday on a crankbait, on a reef. When I caught it, it was already attached to this crankbait. So it had two crankbaits in its mouth. Anytime you have something like that happen, you gotta keep that lure. Put it on the wall for a little keepsake. And we have quite the bounty y'all. So we have actually white bass, we have giant crappie, and we have catfish. It's time to make some crispies. Filet, everybody. We've got an absolute smorgasbord here. I'm actually probably not even going to use the uh, standard filet knife. That was just for show. I think it is important for everybody to know how to clean a fish. If you're going to go out there, keep fish. Uh, you at least need to do them justice by getting the most meat you can off of them. By the way, these are the most uncomfortable sandals I've ever put on my life, but I think they're hilarious. Close, right? Resemblance? Really close in size. So you want to just go right behind uh, the gill plates right here. The gill plates on a fish are located right here. There's these hard plates. Uh, some of them can actually be sharp, so be careful. And you've also got this pectoral fin right here, and you just wanna kinda lift that up with your knife. So what is nice about the electric is you can actually cut through the rib cage. It'll saw through the rib cage, so you don't have to worry about uh, going around that. You just wanna make your cut at an angle, right there behind that gill plate and that pectoral fin right there. You don't want to press too hard. You just want to go until you're to that backbone. That backbone is going to be your guide for filleting across the side of the fish. The best little tip I can give you about using both, both kinds of knives is to constantly uh, move it to try to um, get that knife to move over the little vertebrae and things like that because sometimes if you just use hard pressure and push and don't really use those small little shifts you can cut through the backbone or you'll just get stuck on a backbone and then you'll dull uh, dull your blade feather it up and down until you feel that that knife push through and glide and, and keep doing that so turn it sideways keep it close to the backbone feather it and then really bring it close down there to the spine at the end. You'll feel it kind of start to get easier as you go through that rib cage. And then you want to just flip it over, leave a little bit of skin on the end so you can have some grip to push the blade through. Go right down in there, push all the way through. And then you're left with a beautiful crappie filet, but you've got a rib cage on it. So all you gotta do is just cut right down the side of that rib cage there. And crappie will usually have a little bit of extra meat down there towards the, the base. So that is the wondrous filet, one of the highest grade freshwater fish that you can put in your mouth. All right y'all, we have done our cleaning and it is time to do some cooking. So we got all of our crappies, white bass, and even a catfish filleted. But we're, what we're gonna focus on here today is doing the half shell style. Now I know all you Cajun fishing freaks out there already know what I'm talking about. It's a popular way to do redfish and some other saltwater species, but you can do this with crappie as well and it's excellent. What I've done here is you guys just watch me clean the fish outside and you clean these exact, exact same way, but this, this last one that I cleaned Instead of going between the skin 
and the meat I just went ahead and cut it right off at the end so you you end up with a big old fat slab scales and all rib cage still in there look at that pea. I'm, ooh, that's hand size and I caught a random catfish so I'm throwing that in there as well especially with these uh, heavier spices I'm gonna be using a lot of black pepper a lot of cayenne uh, this is actually sunflower seed oil I don't think I've ever used that on fish try that out and we'll rub that in just gonna give fish meat a little lubrication for the spice for our base Cosmo SPG it's just an excellent base I use this on fish chicken steaks love those dried chunks of garlic in there rock a little cayenne don't use too much this stuff can be interesting on the taste buds so we're going to set our grill at about 350 400 just kind of a medium temp and then we are going to let the flames come up underneath hit that half shell and just watch until the juices start coming out the top that's going to be your indicator that fish is done ignore the catfish i'm cooking that a different way osg cooking up the sides as usual yeah we got some cherries and some cheese cherries and cheese that sounds yeah. Terrible with fish. We could try to give her some fish, but she really is not a fish. She's girl. not into that fish game yet. She's not. She hasn't experienced her first good dangle. That's mm. why. That's part of the problem. You got to get pride in catching the fish, and then, and then the fish it. tastes better. So what do, what do we actually have? Uh, we actually have with the fish. Just some potatoes and onions. Your request. Taters and onions. Good starch with your fish is always good. She's eating for two. I am. Do in. Two months? Two months. Coming at you fast. Are you ready? Are you ready, Daddy? Uh, yeah, I, I was born ready. <laughs> sure. <laughs> For dessert, we have the specials. The OSG special cookies. Those are the snickerdoodle classics. You're on your last leg of recipes on the cookbook. I've got two more cookie recipes and then like 10 just all-time favorites, like the cinnamon rolls, scones, brownies. For those that don't know, she's been working on a cookbook since the beginning of the year. It's launching uh, in October, yep. correct? correct? And she's pretty much knocking it out before baby. She's just an overall, you know, super human wife. I just love the whole operation we got going here, y'all. We park the silver bullet in there. We do our fish cleaning down there. We bring them up here and then we cook them on up for the fan. It's just the circle of life. You got a bite for me? Okay. Thank you. The appetizers from any, you know, some uh, water mixed with a little chalk. So the eggs at about 450, we're gonna go ahead and throw these on. Got the kitty cats wrapped in tin foil with uh, some lemon in there. The slabs are just how you guys saw them. There we go, we're gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. Really just wanna look for those juices starting to come out and the meat starting to separate. Another appetizer for me, Amy? Oh, delicious. Oh, yeah, I think the fishing freaks want some. Say hi, fishing freaks. Hi, fishing freaks. Let's go drink it out. It's weird. Ooh, steamies. They're not sweating yet, but it's looking good. We'll set ourselves another timer for five minutes. Ooh, yeah. Juices coming out of the cracks. It's like volcanic deliciousness. And that's how you know. It looks like it needs just a minute or two more. Who's ready for delicious fish? I go to them lakes and I get them big old crappie for you. <laughs> That's actually more than I can eat, but we'll work with it. I've never just had like one crappie, like a crappie fillet for dinner, but I figured if <laughs> there's going to be one, this is it. <laughs> it almost looks like it's just like, mm. I don't know. This would be well served with some roumalade sauce, uh, spicy mayo, something like that, but... Uh, it's it's whatever you want to do. Go like this and then pull towards you like that. Oh, got a little kick in there. Yeah. I like the flavor. Yeah. You put some cayenne in there, didn't you? I did. Oh, I taste it. Daddy made it spicy. 
Daddy put a little cayenne on there for the, for the Cajun Fish and Freaks. Extremely flaky, but I think I went a little overboard on the cayenne. A little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> a, a little roumelade would be nice. You can put some ranch on there and be fine. <laughs> ranch would be okay. We'll, we'll make our own roumelade here real quick. Catfish came out pretty good as well. There go, catfish is good. Alrighty, Fish and Freaks, that is going to wrap it up for our dangle our cleaning, our cooking, all of it. And what an awesome day on the water getting to catch a giant crappie like that. The fishing was a, a little off because of the full moon. The, the bass and the crappie weren't uh, willing to bite like, uh, like I thought they would, but just catching that big crappie was worth going out there. And cooking it up like we did on the half shell, uh, just an awesome way. If you get one over 14 inches, cook it up on the grill or bake it. Um, but doing it on the half shell like that is just a great way to get the most uh, most meat out of your your big crappie that you catch. So thank you guys once again for tuning in today. Don't forget to check out all the fresh Fourth of July flavored merch over at GooseWild.com. Link down below. You better be wearing your red, white, and blue out there on the water this July. And I salute all you fishing freaks. God bless you. I'll see you soon.